If I knew this video wasn't going to get striked with a copyright claim, I would make some sort of gameplay music video set to a metal song about death from the sky, or something along those lines. But oh well, jazz backing track as always. Welcome back folks to another video review here on Mummified Games. I'm Tony, and today we're going to be talking about Airships Conquer the Skies by Zarkonin. In this game, you take to the skies and build floating ships that fly in the air, using them to strike down your enemies' airships, land ships, stationary bases, or even sometimes large mythical beasts. The game's main selling point is that you can build and construct your own ships. The shipbuilding is really diverse. There are a ton of things you can put in or on your ship, either making it out of basic wood or upgrading the armor to metals or even more exotic materials. The list of weapons you can have in this game is incredibly vast. There are cannons, missiles, bombs, flamethrowers, ramming spikes, all with different angles of fire, ranges, power levels. Equip whatever you want and try to complete the missions. There is also a large number of different types of propulsion as well. Anything you think you would use to move a ship is in this game. Everything from sails to propellers to jet turbines. What's great about the sails is that they really add to the airships part of the airship conversation. And then the other main thing you can use to customize your ships is the levitation devices and have huge tanks of lifting gases added to your ship. Use a magical internal levitation stone or a cultish moon fragment. And then every ship needs to have a functioning interior as well. There are a lot of things you need to add to your internals to make it function. There are crew quarters, ammo storage, coal to fuel your engines, captain locations to set to make sure that the ship knows how to steer and fly. Sometimes your ship needs extra storage space, so you need to include extra rooms that are empty. And as always, we can't forget a fire extinguisher. Every vessel needs at least one. This game is super fun. There are a couple of tutorial missions that you can run through to get the hang of things. They do a really great job at explaining the game, and then the basic missions you can play are great ways of testing out the new designs that you built. Is that ship good enough to cut it? Can it stand up to the Leviathan? Or should you work on tweaking some weapons? What's great about this game is that it's unlike when I was reviewing Gladibops. The main hang up in that game was the tricky AI coding that needed work, that kept me from moving forward on some levels, reaching a frustration point and moving on to another game type, then hitting that point again and moving on to the next until I had nowhere left to go and needed to make another attempt at the first mode I was working on. But in this game, it didn't feel as though I was stuck on one level for too long. There might have been some tweaks that need to be made to some of the ships or build a new type of ship, but most of the problems were solved with re-rolling my options. Not to mention that the inclusion of easy, medium, and hard levels to each mission was a great help to being able to move past difficult levels. Amazing what can happen with simple additions to the game. This game also lets you build land ships, such as walking machines, but in a game called Airships, who cares about being stuck on the ground? Get out of here. There's also another game mode called Conquest. Admittedly, I found out about this first time while recording the footage for this review. This is sort of a map explore and takeover kind of game. You're given a spot of land and there are other computer players with their own bases that you can take over. There's also a science tree to play around with and research new things, unlocking parts that might be needed in some of your more extravagant designs some of which would be upgrading levitation sources. Sort of a city management, but with aerial combat. Here your cities will create more and more gold, and then the little things that it takes to control a government will cost maintenance fees, and then also building new ships will cost you. Slowly the cities will produce more and more gold, earning you enough gold to buy bigger and bigger ship designs you have in your schematics. There was another airship game I played in the past called Guns of Icarus, but that was more four-player team management game where you had to maintain a pre-built ship. This lets you take a much more third-person look at the events in this game and command ships to fight a certain way, building a ship that fits a type of situation. And I don't mean a catch-all ship that's good at everything, I mean having a specific issue that you need solved, and having a bunch of ships that all have a place and a thing they do really well. Found out that I kept building more and more ships that needed to be incredibly high and have guns pointing down-ish. Weapons that have super huge range range, but aren't limited to just front firing. It kept building bombers that would be high in the sky and shoot or drop things from out of range. This was a good strat for almost 90% of the time. Every once in a while there were cases where the ship I built was too expensive, and the trick was finding ways to make it cheaper. There is a cost mechanic to this game where the cost of the ship needs to be within a threshold, similar to a weight class. It makes sense that a 300 pound big beefy fighter wouldn't fight a 200 pound cruiserweight. So the ships you build need to be 
be under $1,000, $1,500, $2,000, different levels. But what's great is that sometimes it's not about making the biggest ship you can. Sometimes it's about taking a bunch of little ships into battle. You can bring anything you want into games. You can bring anything you want into the games, as long as everything is under the limit. Sometimes, sometimes I had just made a really great ship for only $500. Then I'd bring three of them into a $1,500 game and then surround the other player. Something I also found out was that there were certain weapons that could reach almost all the way across the map with quite decent accuracy. Pairing them with a module that helps with accuracy can actually turn the ship into quite the deadly sniper. Pair that with a lift machine that can outfly your enemies, then you have a recipe for success. Although that's not to say that I loved everything about this game though. There are some ship part combos that let you reach an elevation much higher than the game allows. So even though your ship could go a lot higher, the map itself doesn't let you reach your maximum elevation. Moving this game from one ship to another can be quite tedious, especially if you're trying a pincer maneuver where you have two ships on both sides of the map dealing long range damage to one ship in the middle. The follow the action camera option isn't that great when it comes to bomber ships. You most likely have to be right over the target and if you mean to have a great deal of distance then the target will be directly under you hidden by the center control bar. The one that holds all the buttons that tell your ship what to do, move, focus fire, focus on repairs, blocking what you're trying to attack. A lot of ease of living features are missing in this game as well. The text boxes don't have the ability to use common hotkeys to type in keys such as control A, control C, control V. The slider buttons don't let you slide them. You need to click on them at the point you want to set it. There's no borderless full screen option. It's only full screen. I would love to try playing over LAN options with this game, but I know getting my friends to play this game will be as hard as pulling teeth. This is another nice game, solid concept and easy to get into. The game is presented well and then gets out of the way and lets you go nuts building ships, bases and missions and dominating, or I should say conquering the skies. Oh sick, it has mod support. Thanks for being cool game devs. Unlike some people. Oof, I am so glad it's Friday because this week has been brutal. I'm running out of games that I played a ton of while absent from YouTube. And this was one of the games that I didn't spend a lot of time with. I clocked a good couple of hours, but not entire weeks worth of playtime, like with Odd Realm or Skyro. If you played this game, what was the settings you like to play the most? What sort of ships did you build and find success with? Are there any other ship building combat strategy games like this in the racial justice bundle that you think I should try out? Or if there's another game out there that you really want me to play, let me know in the comments. In the meantime, why try? I know why. This feeling inside me says it's time I was gone. Fly by night. All right, that's as close as you're gonna get without me getting copyright striked. You all do the YouTube dance. Like, sub, bell, share. Let me know what you think. And as always, friends, keep digging. We'll make it out sometime. See you in the next one.